Hello everyone and welcome to Affiliate Journey, the video podcast starting from this very episode and there is audio content being released every Friday. So if in case you aren't subscribed and you are a podcast listener, uh, I will provide a link down below. So make sure you check it out. And in case you if you're a video listener, uh, then I would urge you to subscribe to the YouTube channel because as well, every episode and interview I do will be released every Friday. Well, the interviews will be released every Friday. And as for other content regarding affiliate marketing that I make, will be probably released at a different time. Anyways, uh, in today's episode, I interviewed Spencer Mecham, the affiliate marketing king, uh, automation nation guy. So uh, if you don't know him, I ask him to introduce himself in the video, so I won't do it here. I will just quickly apologize to you because I messed up the hardware settings at the beginning. And honestly, uh, there is really bad quality in the first like five or 10 minutes of the video. There is a lot of echo in the background. So I do apologize for that. And also you probably noticed that I am pretty damn shy and insecure because that was my first interview. Uh, and as for everything else, uh, whatever Spencer and I talked about, I will provide the link in the description. So in case you're interested in anything, uh, make sure you check it out. So I hope you're gonna enjoy the interview. Uh, Spencer provided amazing value. So I would ask you to bear through that like a whole part of the video because it will be well worth your time. Anyways, I hope you're gonna enjoy the video. Peace out. Hello everyone and welcome to the affiliate journey with Miodrag Milenkovic. And today I'm honored to present to you the Spencer Mikam, the man who actually got me started in all of this. And I'm I was thrilled to have him as a first guest. That was my idea all, all along. So Spencer, for those of for those people who don't know who you are, could you introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your background in what you work now, what you work on now? Yeah. Um, so right now I'm a full time affiliate marketer um, slash course creator. That's kind of where all my income comes from. Uh, so as far as like where I came from. Um, I graduated from college with a public relations degree, which if anyone's in public relations, you, you graduate with that degree and realize it's a pretty useless degree. Uh, there's not a lot of places to go with it. Uh, so I ended up just like a little digital marketing agency um, and, and I was learning some like SEO stuff there and doing SEO for companies. And um, that's kind of where I started to learn a lot of like, talent and digital marketing in general, kind of like online, the online marketing world, right? And and you start to realize as you're, you're working with clients, a lot of people start to realize this as they're working for clients that, you know, oh, I can make my client $10,000 and I still, you know, or I can make them $100,000. I can do incredible things for them. And nothing will change for me. You know, I'll still make the same amount of money no matter how good of a job I do. So for me, like that was kind of demotivating to be like, you know, yeah, you want me to do a good job and I want to do a good job, but there's no real motivation here for me to do like a crazy wild good job because, you know, at best I get a little bonus or something, you know, I, I can make you six figures and I'll get a $500 bonus on, you know, at the end of that. Um, so I, I, that's where I kind of met a guy and he started showing me some cool like affiliate marketing things and, and I was pretty hooked from the beginning because I was like, this is the coolest thing ever, you know, like if you do well, you learn it and you crush it, then 100% of the reward is yours and um, and that's, I mean, that's how it should be, right? <laughs> and so that's why I've like really honed in on, on the affiliate marketing side of things. And, and, and that's, um, I do affiliate marketing course creation, but like my real passion is in the affiliate marketing side. Like I sell the course because I like being able to help other people, but like I really just love doing the affiliate stuff. No, you're famous for the click funnels, of course. You're their top affiliate, I think, to this day as well. But what got you to the ClickFunnels, actually? I mean, you got me started with ClickFunnels, but what got you first started with ClickFunnels? And why did you choose them when you didn't know you could be, I mean, I believe you didn't know you, you will be this successful with it <laughs> at the beginning. I, I didn't know that. In fact, I didn't even dream of it, you know, like that wasn't even a possibility in my head, to be honest. But um, 
I actually, so I, I worked, uh, I quit the digital marketing agency at some point and I moved on to do in-house marketing at like a small, a small local company at seven or eight employees. Um, and while we were there, a consultant came and he was kind of going over our the company and he was like, you guys need sales funnels. And so he was like, you guys need to make sales funnels and here's the software to do it. And so I signed up for ClickFunnels and they were like, Spencer, you figure out ClickFunnels. You know, you're a marketing guy, you figure out how it works. And so, um, this is like at home, I've been kind of like playing with affiliate marketing and kind of getting the hang of it, you know, and then at work, they're having me sign up for ClickFunnels and then ClickFunnels. And so it wasn't long before I was like, Oh, they have an affiliate program. And like, that's what I'm trying to do on my side gig here is the affiliate thing. And, um, so I was able to learn ClickFunnels at work for hours every day, you know, and they probably regretted giving me that down the road because <laughs> a year later I quit to live off of ClickFunnels commissions. Um, but yeah, it was, it was my work that brought me into it. And then, um, once I realized there was an affiliate program, I started to get really into that and it really took off faster than I could have ever thought it would. Yeah. I never heard this story actually from you. Yeah. It's not one that I do on any of my webinars or anything. So maybe I got to write it down or something. <laughs> so tell me if you could start it again now and say there isn't click funnels, like where would you start and what would you do more of, which you didn't know at the beginning? And what would you do less of, which you now know you regretted along the way? What would I do more of and what would I do less of? So something I started to steer my business towards is I would focus more on, um, especially while I was at my job and while I'm working, I would focus more on building a passive income. So if you look at, even within affiliate marketing, but especially in like the whole online marketing world, um, I think most people actually are going for a passive income, but a lot of times we choose routes that will never be passive. You know, you hear about these entrepreneurs that are they're working 80, 90 hour weeks um, and they're making good money and they're succeeding, but it's because they chose a route that, that as much as people try to sell it that way, it will never be passive, you know? And so I've looked like I've spent a lot of time like looking at my business and like, where's the money come from? Where's my time going? And I've realized like, Oh, a lot of my money is coming from things that aren't taking a lot of my time. And so, um, I would focus on the passive income source, which is affiliate marketing. It's, um, you know, there, there's just a few that can actually be passive. And then I would focus on the traffic source that's passive. So you see a lot of these affiliates there. Um, they think Facebook ads is like the only thing right now, you know, like you gotta do Facebook ads. Everyone does Facebook ads. Um, but Facebook ads by definition will never be a passive income, right? Like as soon as you turn on your ads, your traffic stops and boom, you're starting over looking for people again. Right. Um, so Facebook ads and, and really like paid ads from in general tend to not be passive. They tend to be able to have, you know, they tend to be able to scale and give you profit. Um, but you know, you, you don't own your traffic and you never know when, um, when you'll get shut down and then instantly your income stops. So a passive income is done from things like Google, YouTube, Pinterest, and you know, each of those has a paid source and then email automation. Like, when I look at my business, those are the four places and podcasts. I just don't have a podcast, so I don't talk about it ever. But those things are passive, right? You can create content and YouTube, for example, you came through one of my YouTube videos. You said, I probably made that video a year or two or like three years, man, nah, probably not three years, but I made that video long before you ever found it, right? Yeah. Um, and, and because it's, um, it's a passive traffic source, YouTube keeps serving it up to people and, and Google keeps serving it up to people. And so you're able to, that's like true passive income, right? I could go, I could go live under a rock for a few months and my YouTube channel will continue to push people, um, and into, into funnels and things like that. It'll continue to drive traffic to all my affiliate products. And then on the business side, that's the traffic side on the business side, because I've chosen to be an affiliate. Um, all of that is taken care of as well by the company, you know, that's not me. So you choose the right products, you know, that are pat that are true passive products and you choose the right traffic source. And then it's a, it's a slower buildup and it takes a lot more time. Um, but, but that's the only way you really reach passive income, which is what most of us really want, right? Like millionaires is great, but passive income is way better. Yeah, I agree. That's actually like right at the time I was reading, I think rich dad, poor dad and four hour work week, like month or two after I saw your video and you were talking about passive income and I was like, and that's how I do it. Like I knew I wanted that, but I didn't know how I achieve it. And then I watched some of your videos when you, where you were talking about affiliate marketing and making 
passive income with it and that sparked me to start all this like more than a year ago year and a half oh, that's awesome that is awesome yeah no tell me i was interested like i heard your story where you were trying things on instagram on instagram at the beginning and <laughs> it didn't really work out but it took a while like you said for the first year or so you you earned only around 50 bucks or something like that like what kept you motivated to keep on trying and not failing or uh, and question. failing and what <laughs> kept you going um yeah that's a good question why did i keep going <laughs> um so yeah like in the in the timeline of things i actually started trying affiliate marketing a year probably before i hit click funnels and before that i was trying other things i was trying stock market and real estate and then i tried affiliate marketing um and like you said i tried i tried like kind of this instagram follow unfollow direct message thing that if you know that i i hate and i don't do it anymore but um i tried it because i you know, some forum or some little course. I don't even know what, what pointed me that way, but that's what I was trying. Um, and it didn't work and I didn't do very well. I tried blogging and didn't do great at blogging then because I didn't totally know what I was doing. Um, but so what kept me going was, I mean, just the, yeah, the idea that it could, you know, it doesn't matter if it's passive income, right? So if it takes 10 years, it's still worth it. You know, it, if, I, if it takes 10 years to set up a passive income, well, that's still me retiring at 35 while everyone else retires at 65. Um, if it takes 20 years, that's still me retiring at 45 and everyone else is retiring at 65. You know, like I couldn't imagine me failing for 40 years straight. So <laughs> I figured if I kept at it, eventually I would, I would find something and it would work. And Hopefully that would be, you know, closer to the one or five year mark and not the 20 or 30 year mark. But, um, so that kept me going and, and like, you know, it took a year before I actually started making anything. Um, and then once I found something that worked, I kind of made it my thing, you know, and I really, I really went in on that with, with everything I had. And, and that's when you start to scale is once you have something that like works and you're like, Oh, this is like, I can, I can fairly consistently, um, guarantee that this result will happen when I do this, you know, and once you start to like get that, get that and find something that works like that, um, then you just give all your time to that because you're like, wow, I know this will work. I just need to put in the time and the effort and maybe the money, you know, um, but I know it'll work because now I've tested it multiple times and it's worked. Okay. Now tell me, I was interested, like a lot of people when they're beginning, uh, they have, and I myself included when I was beginning, uh, I had this problem of overwhelm, like a lot of tons and tons of informations and everybody is selling like, do it this way. This is the way to success. And everybody's shouting, like, look at me. How do you look past that? And like, uh, what would you recommend for the new people in this world of affiliate marketing and passive income? Uh, what should they focus on and how to avoid those distractions and that overwhelm? That's funny. You know, so I, that's actually one thing I am good at. I've got my weaknesses, but like I tend to ignore all that noise anyway, just like it's just never really been my thing. Um, so I would say the rule of ones, right? Pick, pick one thing. Um, a lot of the entrepreneurs and me included, like, you know, they kind of dabble in e-com, they dabble in affiliate marketing, they dabble in agency work. Um, so I'd say pick one thing, one, you know, one way you're going to make money, pick a few products. Um, don't get distracted by launches and all that junk. You know, I like there was a product launch, you know, that huge one that just happened these last few weeks. Don't let yourself get distracted by all these things and waste time, you know, making little bits of money here and there, but like take a few products that you really believe in and want to go all in on and really make that your, your core focus. Um, and then in the rule of ones, like master one traffic source. So like I mastered YouTube in the beginning. Um, and only once I felt like I like, I, you know, just really good at YouTube and I got it all and I could pretty much guarantee, you know, results on YouTube. It, then, then I systemized it, hired someone and said, okay, let's go find another traffic source. You know, whether it's Facebook groups or like right now I'm doing a blog is like my next big thing. Um, but, but that's like all my focus right now is learning blogs, buying courses on blogs and focusing on my blog. Um, because I like the rule of ones because it, because you know, these things work, right? You know, affiliate marketing can make money. You know, e-com can make money. You know, agency can make money. You know, a blog can make money. You know, a YouTube channel can make money. 
So if you're not making money on those, it's just because you haven't mastered it yet. If you've mastered it, you would be making money. And so that, that puts it on you. Like it's all on you to master that one thing. And, and then you will make money because, um, cause it works. It's been proven that it works right to those that, that are mastering that. So that's what, that's, that would be my advice is stick to the rule of ones, um, become a master at one thing and, um, you know, a, a hard promoter of a few core products and, and make that happen. Now, here's a little selfish question, like you mentioned YouTube, and I bought your course, Affiliate Secrets 2.0. Now, did anything change for this year or a little less since you launched it? I mean, do you, do you use some new strategies when you're doing YouTube SEO and stuff or YouTube videos, or it's pretty much the same as you've teached it? Um, YouTube SEO has been pretty similar. I've, I've, I've added some new strategies for sure. Um, I'll say that, uh, that so I, I usually, I'm trying to do a launch once a year. So I launched 1.0 Affiliate Secrets 2017, I think the end of it. 2.0 launched at the end of 2018. So I'm hoping to do another quarter, like a 3.0 or something else at the end of this year. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to add a much bigger focus to blogging, which is the one thing I don't teach in my next, in my last one and Pinterest. Um, and it's going to remove a focus from some of those things I talked about, like passive income, those like non-passive sources. Like I won't teach Facebook ads at all in there. Um, I, because it's just not passive and, it, and I want to focus on teaching people passive. So I'll be focused on teaching passive income sources like Pinterest, Google blogs, YouTube podcasting, and I'll, I'll, I'll teach both paid and organic of those sources. But yeah, in terms of like what's changed, um, not a ton. People think YouTube and Google change their algorithms a lot, but like, um, they really don't. They, they, they make minute little changes, but their end goal, if, if you focus on their end goal, which for YouTube is long view time so that they can get a lot of ads in there, right? And they want people to stay on the YouTube platform and watch multiple videos and things like that. Like that's YouTube's focus is people watch people watching, coming to YouTube, watching lots of videos, um, and staying for a long time on YouTube. And so like you, you take that mindset, and that's never going to change. That's, that's their whole model, business model, right? And so you focus everything on that. And, and even if their algorithm makes minute changes, it's just making minute changes to come closer to that goal. Yeah, it's understandable. I also, now the question escaped me, damn it. Uh, now, tell these people you have free course, you have paid courses, that, where they can find them. And I'll be sure to put links in the notes, in the YouTube, in the podcast, wherever it's needed. Yeah, so I give lots and lots of free stuff. So if you go to buildapreneur.com slash free, there's, there's free courses on a lot of what I've talked about, email marketing, there's a free affiliate course, like a get started thing. Um, there's a lot of stuff at buildapreneur.com slash free. Um, if you want to learn, like if affiliate marketing, it, you know, that is what you want to do, then, then I would watch my webinar where I I basically take you inside of my business and say, this is how I, you know, this is how my business is structured and built to be able to be a million dollar affiliate marketing business. Um, so that's it. Uh, I'll, I'll just let you put a link down below because I think it's a longer, <laughs> it's a longer link, but there'll be a link down below to that. Um, and, and that webinar. And then obviously should you choose to go past that, like you really are all in on affiliate marketing and that's your way. Um, then I do sell a course, which I'm sure we'll have a link down below as well that can, uh, it can guide you to that and and get you get you like to see like the full spectrum of everything that i do yeah no i just realized when you mentioned it uh we did the entire interview and i haven't uh had a single question about email marketing which you are also like a master of what what's the like top two or three tips you would give to people who are new or starting out about email marketing like what should they focus on um, it's funny. I, I don't ever feel like I'm a master of email marketing. Um, I, I, <laughs> um, I do have a ton of email and stuff that goes out, but I've never like, I've never actually invested a ton of time into training and learning that. I just kind of, I wing it basically. Um, so I don't have a, like a strategy for that as much, but, um, in terms of what to do, I would say the overall structure, um, is you need a soap opera sequence and you can Google what that is and you need, and you basically need to, in your emails as an affiliate marketer, you can't just be pushing affiliate products. So if you, if you go through, if you look at my email sequence, taking a step back, 
you'll see that I'll send like motivational emails. I'll send like free training emails, you know, emails that are just promoting YouTube videos. I'll send free stuff in emails. And then I'll do an email sequence that, you know, that two or three emails will sell something like, Hey, you need this product. It's really cool. Hey, this product is awesome. And then I'll go back to like teaching or telling a story or something like that. Right. Um, because the relationship needs to be built so that when you actually start selling something, it's not just some guy out of the blue spamming them, right? Like they need to like know who you are. Um, and, and that's done through previous emails that, that, uh, to build that relationship and, and help them to like see you as a person and things. And those, those are easy to write. Cause you just sit down and write something that, you know, the passion you have, or like I write about hobbies. I have all kinds of things just to, just to personify me. Um, so that's the first thing is like, is, is don't just sit there and pound them with affiliate links, like, like um, spread out what kinds of emails you send out and, and really help them to build a picture and relationship of who you are. Um, the next one is automation. So I'm just, I'm going to stick with those two. Um, I don't know about you, but when I talk to a ton of people, like when I, when I, I used to do coaching calls a lot and they'd come in and I'm like, how big is your email list? You know? And they'd be like, Oh, 500, 600. And I'd be like, well, when's the last time you emailed them? And they'd be like, Oh, like three months ago or a month ago when there was this course launch, you know, like it's really hard to email your list every other day or something. Like it's just hard to stay on top of that. So if you can build out an email automation, and then every email address you capture, you, you know, is going to go through that automation. They're all going to get emails that sell them things. You know, you're not going to have to worry about um, sending that person an email every other day. Then it really, really helps, you know, because all the lead gen you do after that, you know, will you'll get a chance to market to them down the road through email. Um, so set up an automation that's, you know, start with five emails and then just add one every couple of days and do that for the rest of your life. So that, so that every email address you get, is guaranteed to get 200 emails from you and, and that'll maximize how much money you can make off of anything, you know, anything that involves you capturing an email address. Yeah. Those are nice informations, man. Now I want to be mindful of your time. So last two questions. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the question you're not being asked? Like what do you think people are not even aware of that should ask and you are aware of and are doing that? Like what, what do you think people are missing out and aren't aware of the beginners, let's say? Uh-huh. Um, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I would say, I don't know if they're missing out. I would say when I look at beginners and I look at their, um, what they're doing, they lack a comprehension of the big picture. So the big picture can be broken down pretty easily. Like, you get a lead magnet, you create an opt-in page for that lead magnet that captures an email. The next page is a bridge page that links them to your first affiliate offer, whatever that is. Then um, you have an email automation set up that, that sells them things forever. And that's, and that's affiliate marketing in a, you know, in a, in a tiny little nutshell. And so affiliates, like they, they focus on little things and they don't look back and say, okay, I'm just going to work my way back. I'm going to create my email automation and then I'm going to choose what products to promote and then, or maybe you do that first. And then I'm going to create my funnel uh, and my lead magnet. And then I'm just, if that's all in place. I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to focus everything on traffic and I'm just going to start pushing traffic to my funnels because I know that I'm capturing email addresses and that's my true audience, right? I'm an email address. Um, so I think lots of affiliates start focusing on traffic way too early. They don't have anything in place to actually like capture an email, email that email, sell that email, make money off that email address, you know? Um, so I'd say, look at the big picture, start at the end and work your way backwards. And, um, and then once you, once you get all the main stuff set up, all you have to do is just focus on content, putting stuff on Facebook, putting stuff on YouTube, pumping out content, 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 and each piece of content brings you closer and closer to your goal. Right. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of beginners just miss the big picture and they focus on little pieces of it instead of the whole thing. Now, one more thing. Uh, what gave you the confidence, the confidence at the beginning when you were making YouTube videos? And I know I had a problem and I was like, I know some stuff, but I'm like, am I really that good to teach someone like on YouTube? <laughs> like what gave you the confidence to like go pump out some videos and you eventually got results, but before you got the results, like what got you like the confidence. So I didn't have a ton of confidence. My first YouTube video doesn't have me, um, 
in it actually uh i don't put like you know most of my videos have a little box in the in the corner over here and it's me talking um i i didn't have that because i was i didn't have the confidence to put a video of me in my youtube channel so it was just a it was a screen a, a blank screen and then it was me talking and that was a lot easier because there was no one that could even see me or know who i was my, my channel was a name that was not associated with me so i was like a no you know no one would ever know who i was um but but honestly the confidence in youtube comes from consistency so um like i always tell people if you're if you need to get good at video sit down um do it well i have it in my group i have a 10-day facebook challenge a facebook live challenge where once a day for 10 days you do a facebook live um, i give you a subject you do the facebook live and and that changes it for everybody so i would say that's the number one thing do a 10 20 or 30 day facebook live challenge um, and just promise yourself, I'm going to go live for five minutes every single day this month. And I'm going to talk about something, you know, I'm going to talk about things I like, I'm going to talk about, it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of getting you confident in front of a camera. Um, cause you can, you can even Google if, if, if anyone, if anyone listening wants to Google how to read stock charts, uh, my YouTube yeah, video. Where you're showing this video. <laughs> yeah. And it's a terrible video. Like it's, it, it's, uh, it's monotone. It's boring. There's no video of me in there. It's not that good at teaching. Um, and so you can look at that and then you can see my journey from there to here. Right. And say, Oh, okay. Like, and, um, no one coached me. No one like gave me confidence coaching. It was just a matter of like doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And then you just start to get comfortable in front of the camera the same way you're comfortable doing other things in life, you know? Yeah. That's some great advice, man. Now tell the people where they can find you online. Like where do you hang out the most and where they can learn from you? Buildapreneur.com has everything. So that's where you can go to like ask questions and, and my Facebook group has links from there. And so, yeah, if you go there, you'll see links to everything I offer and have. Yeah. I highly recommend his Facebook group. There is tons of great information and great people as well sharing their knowledge. Yes, anyway. sir. <laughs> <laughs> That would be all, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.